In this video, I'm gonna share timeline tips you just gotta know if you want editing to be faster, happier, and more productive. If you're a beginner in Resolve, these should really help you out. Even if you're a pro, you might learn a thing or two. And if you're new here, I'm Allie. I'm a professional video editor, and Will and I work on a lot of commercials and brand campaigns. We also release weekly YouTube videos teaching you how to edit and shoot better, as well as gear reviews. To stay in the loop, subscribe to our channel. Now let's hop into Resolve and get started. Okay, we're in the edit page and let's say that you created several timelines in one project. If you wanna access any of your other timelines, you can either go up here above the program window and click this drop down menu and double click on another timeline to open it up. You can also click in the media pool to access your various timelines. But my most favorite way to just be able to easily work on and go back and forth between timelines is changing my timeline view. By clicking on this timeline icon here and under timeline view options, choosing the first icon that has like a little tab sticking out of the top. And now as you're working away, when you open up more timelines, they'll show up in tabs here. This next feature I use all the time. I'm gonna zoom into my timeline by holding down Command and the plus key on my keyboard. And I wanna freeze this frame. So I have the option to make it show longer in this project. So I'll press B for the blade tool, make a cut, move over one frame, cut. I'll just select it and drag it onto another track so it's easier to see. Right click and choose change clip speed. And here is the option of freeze frame. So check mark it, change. And now when I drag this clip out, it is the freezed frame. Next, let's say that you may have duplicate clips on your timeline and you'd like to be able to just easily spot those duplicates. To do this, click on view and show duplicate frames. And now any duplicates on your timeline are highlighted and easy to spot. If you wanna find the original of a clip, Right click on it and choose find in media pool. And look at that, there it is. Okay, next, let's open up effects. And as I scrub through them, I can see the preview of what that effect looks like to decide if I wanna use it or not without actually committing. I'll show you how to do this in a sec, but before I do, let's say that there's an effect that you just really like so much so that you wanna be able to remember it and easily access it for later. To do that, star the effect, which will add it to your favorite list. If you wanna easily access it, just Go down to favorites here and there it will be with any other effects that you've favorited. And back to the other tip to be able to see previews of effects up here, click these three little dots and choose hover scrub preview. Next, if you have spaces in between your clips like this and you wanna just quickly bring all these clips together, first, make sure that you have clicked on your timeline so it's selected. Now select edit and delete gaps. And voila, the gaps are gone. But did you notice that this audio didn't move? Well, this brings me to the next thing you need to know about, and that is Auto Track Selector. This is the Auto Track Selector icon. So when Auto Track Selector is turned on on tracks, this is basically telling Resolve that that track needs to be easily accessible. And when it's turned off on a track, it tells Resolve, don't pay any attention to me. As you can see on all four of my video tracks, I have Auto Track Selector turned on, but none of the audio tracks have it turned on. So using option B, which is a keyboard shortcut I created to make a cut point wherever my playhead is through all of the video and audio tracks, which on a side note, if you wanna learn how to create custom keyboard shortcuts and learn a whack load of other must knows in Resolve, then after this video, I highly recommend you check out this video. I'm gonna link it in the description below. So anyway, because auto track selector is turned off on my audio tracks, when I press option V to cut through everything, only my video tracks are affected and cut. I'll just undo that and zoom out here. Another thing about Auto Track Selector is, even though it might be turned off on some or all of your tracks, you can still, for example, select your media on those tracks and move those clips and the audio around. And I show you that just to compare it to locking a track. If I were to lock just these audio tracks, they become grayed out and I can't move or change them at all. Did you know that if you have a clip and you're just too lazy to look at the metadata to find out what the resolution of it is and the frames per second, yada, 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 but you want a timeline created for those settings in the media pool, you can right click on that clip and choose create new timeline using selected clip. You can change the name and some other stuff. 
And there's your new timeline with those clip settings. So on either end of this clip, there are handles. If you aren't sure what handles are, ask me and I will get back to you in the comments below. Now, let's say you want to maintain the duration of a clip within your timeline while scrubbing through it to show an earlier or a later part of that clip in this same spot. To do this, you can press T on your keyboard, hover your cursor over the middle of the clip. This bracketed double arrow icon will appear, which lets you drag right or left to reveal an earlier or later part of it. Okay, this next one, you might already know, but if you don't know it, it makes editing easier. So I'm gonna show you. See how when I drag this clip over close to this other clip, my clumsy dragging just accidentally started like eating this other clip here? Well, I didn't want it to do that. I just wanted the clips to be right beside each other. So to make this easy, make sure you have snap turned on by clicking this horseshoe icon or pressing N on your keyboard. And now when I move this clip here, it snaps to the end of the previous one. Much better. If you're at all zoomed in on your timeline and you want to quickly have a zoomed out view of the entire timeline, press Shift Z on your keyboard. There's your entire project. Now, if you wanna to move to another part of your timeline at the same zoom in amount you were at before, press Shift Z again and Resolve will zoom you right back in wherever your playhead is. And there you go. Those are my top timeline tips in Resolve for weekly editing and videography tutorials, as well as gear reviews. Subscribe to stay in the loop. I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks for checking this video out and we'll see you in another one.